Welcome back, booktube. I am going to tell y'all about some physics books I like. Or miscellaneous science, because one of them is just about miscellaneous science. But the other three are about astrophysics, technically speaking. So, I'm going to preface this with... Some of it is high level, like some of the physics is actually math, so... I think you can still learn and glean information out of these books, but it would... Don't expect to like, or don't be discouraged, I should say, about reading these and it being a little over your head because I've now read Relativity, the Special and General Theory by Albert Einstein thrice, and it's still over my head. The most recent time after I took an advanced calculus class because there's math in here. Um, so I figured I would start with this book because that was a nice segue to be just... No, don't be discouraged if you don't know something. Be inspired to go learn what you can or to just glean the what you can out of it because it's still pretty interesting about, like, the concepts of the universe, you know. Um, my parents owned this book. In the seventh grade, I decided I was going to read this book. And I did. And I got nothing out of it. Like, I, I was like, cool, the universe is nuts. Because, like... This is a page of low math quality, or low math amounts, but there's still, like, a substantial amount of math here. Um, anyway, anyway, so it's like... I don't... I, I've just always been fascinated by science and, the, like, size of the universe and physics and all that. I've always loved science, so I was like, I'm gonna read this in second grade. Got nothing out of it. Read it again before I graduated high school. Because I was taking a calculus class. It was cool. I was like, I'm going to get it. Did not get it. Picked it up after I was uh, two years into my engineering degree. I did not complete, but I had taken some advanced calculus and tried to read it again. I got more. But there were still things that were over, over my head because I'm not a theoretical physicist, and that's okay. But needless to say, Albert Einstein's Relativity, the, general, the Special and General Theory book, is pretty cool. It's a lot. I often, to this day, use it to make me go to sleep when I can't sleep. But I do still enjoy it, and I'm still very fascinated by the science behind it. So this is about the highest level or the yeah most complex math book on the list. So we're done with that now. We're going to just put it over there. More for introductory people wanting to just get a slightly into astrophysics is Neil deGrasse Tyson's Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Also, it's like a beautiful book. I think it's amazing. So, um, I, I think the actual cover is pretty cool too. It's just a nice blue book that I spilled something on. So I leave the, the casing on, but it, this is... This book is basically just, if you're wanting to learn more about astrophysics, but you don't want it to be super heavy science like we talked about in that previous book, but you still want to enjoy it and you want to like know about the bigger themes of, and the science that like encompasses this universe, recommend it. It's, it's a joy to read. It was lovely. Neil deGrasse Tyson did a great job of explaining it in a, in a way that normal humans can understand. And also, it was humorous. It was a good read. Um... Yeah. While you wait for your... This is what it says, like, on the sidebar. While you wait for your morning coffee to brew, for the bus, the train, to, or a plane to arrive, astrophysics for people in a hurry will reveal just what you need to be fluent and ready for the next cosmic headlines. From the Big Bang to black holes, from quarks to quantum mechanics, from the search of planets to the search for life in the universe. It's just a, it's a really good starting place. It's, it's a good place. It's a good read. And also in the astrophysics department, before we just merge straight over into general science, Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. I would like to read his other, I believe, two or three books that he has out that are for, like, non-physics people to read to get the full picture of everything. Um, but this is, this was an amazing read, and I think everybody should read it at some point in their lives just because... It's just, it's he, the way he explains the cosmological physics in an engaging way is just super cool. And it, it does a great, I think it's a great, he does a great, he does a great job. I'm sorry, I cannot talk. He does a great job of like relating the bigger pictures of like how the universe was created, how like the things, the elements behind string theory and things that 
or very high level and complex for people to understand in a way that's understandable. And Stephen Hawking, I also like him because, or the way he wrote this book, because he doesn't just shut down other people's beliefs. Because I think that a lot of people are like, astrophysics, it's the same as magic if you're a, re a super religious person. He does a good job of like connecting the dots and just understanding that other people have different opinions and a lot of astrophysics is still theory so that means it has not been proven yet so it's and I'm not equating it to religious faith or anything but it's he does a, if you're just like scared of that because you just is not what you're comfortable with like challenging like the work the words in the bible so to speak he does a good job of like not disrespecting that but also still informing you of the science and how it all works together because Stephen Hawking was a practicing Christian, I believe. So, yeah. Anyways, that was a tangent on the religious aspect of it. But this is, this is the I think one of the best things you can read to get a brief history of the development of universe and time, which is the go hand in hand. This next book is not really about phys physics specifically. It just something just fell out of it. Anyways. Uh, it's called Ciencia. It is, uh, it's, I think, I think of it more as like a reference, but also it's beautiful. I love it. It's so fun. Um, it covers mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, and astronomy for all. I think of it kind of like a reference because it, uh, I believe it starts with use, useful mathematics and physical, physics, physical formulae. Essential elements, so that's the chemistry, evolution, the human body, the compact cosmos, and it just is, it's awesome, and there's, like, really nice uh, illustrations and things like that, uh, or, or I guess, I wouldn't call them illustrations, they're more just, like, physical explanations, like, but look at this thing, about, uh, this is the radioactivity page, but it, it's awesome. So... I would encourage you, if you're like wanting to get more into science or whatever, to pick up not necessarily this book, but a book like this that's reference. It's more of a reference style book where if you want to learn more about one topic or you're studying a topic, but you just need a quick reference on something else, um, it can cover all your bases and it can just give you like an idea of the very like one inch deep, a thousand miles wide theory. So you're not very super knowledgeable on any of the things, but you know a little bit about everything. At the very least, it's a good coffee table book for conversation starters. So that is my um, physics and science books. I have more. I just don't know where they are. Still working on organizing my nonfiction books, that little rolly rascog cart, Ikea cart. So um, yeah, but this is what I got for y'all today. And I hope you enjoy this video. I I do enjoy that I read nonfiction and I don't see a whole lot of people talking about that on booktube so I thought I would bring it y'all's way and hope you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. Again remember to like, subscribe, all that jazz. <laughs> and hope to see you for my next video.